Hey there! Initially, I wasn't going to upload this, but I have been getting recurring requests to check out the Crimson Driver. I did this benchmark video shortly after its release, so it is dated by the time you are seeing this. I didn't want to upload this video because I felt that I approached this a bit too negatively, which wasn't my intention. However, to fulfill the requests, I have decided to upload it regardless. So please, Forgive me for any mistakes, annoying repetitions, loss for words, and the general negative vibe that was unintentional in this video. Hey guys, Penguin Recordings here. Now, as requested quite a number of times, we're going to be taking a look at the AMD Crimson driver that released recently. Now, slightly before the Linux driver release, there were slides leaked to videocards.com. And in particular, there was one slide that caught the interest of many. Linux gamers. But before I get to that slide, I just want to say a couple of things first. Michael of Pharonix and Samsai of Gaming on Linux have already done benchmarks of the Crimson Driver, so there's additional information out there already besides this video if you need it. So I will only be benchmarking the games that were listed in the slides. What's the purpose of this video? Basically, I want to see if those leaked slides are just PR spin and hype or if there is actually truth to the numbers that they showed. So this benchmark is going to be a frame by frame benchmark. So let's actually take a look at the slide. Now it shows four games, Bioshock Infinite, Total War, Portal 2 and Dota 2 as having an increase in performance when you use the Crimson Driver. The problem with this slide is the ambiguity. It mentions a previous driver, but what driver are they referring to? Are they referring to Catalyst 15.9 or are they referring to 15.7, 15.5? Or are they referring to some version of Radeon SI and Mesa? We don't know. But I'm taking the educated guess that it's 15.9 which directly preceded this Crimson driver release. Additionally, we have no idea what settings the game will run at. All we know is that they ran it at a resolution of 1920 by 1200. So to play it safe, I will be running it at a resolution of 1920 by 1080p, and I will be benchmarking two extremes of each game. That is the maximum settings that I can push the game to, and the lowest settings that I can put the game to. Additionally, they mentioned Total War. Now we have two Total War games available on Linux, Empire Total War and Total War Attila. So this, since they did not mention, I'm going to make the educated guess that they're going to be referring to Total War Attila here, since it's the newer title. Additionally, the slides don't show what cards they used that got these performance gains. All we can assume is that it's meant to be across the board performance increase for HD 7000 series cards upwards to the 300 series generation. Now one thing I really dislike about the slides is that we don't know how to interpret those percentages. Take Total War for example, 155% increase. What does this mean? Does it mean a 55% increase of the original 100% or are we referring to a 155% increase on top of 100% already? The first assumption would mean that we'd be getting about an additional half the frame rates that we're already getting with Total War. The other assumption would mean that we're getting more than double the current frame rates, which I think is highly unlikely. So once again, the educated assumption or guess that I'm making here is that they're referring to these as 55% increase, 12% increase, 13% increases, and you can pretty much just ignore the 100% altogether. So as we can see, the slide leaves a lot to ambiguity, and this means a lot is left up to user perception and assumption. This is a very naughty PR move and a no-no in my books. So let's actually take a look at the benchmark values in reality of what I got. Portal 2 at minimum settings basically garnered no difference with frame rates between the Crimson and Catalyst 15.9 drivers. When we maxed everything out, we did see a slight increase, but it was only by 6 frames per second on average. Nothing really amazing there. Bioshock Infinite on minimum settings saw a very, very, very slight increase of about 5 frames per second on average. Still not impressive, and when we max everything out, 
there is literally no difference. We get the exact same frames on average between Crimson and Catalyst 15.9. Now Total War was the one with the most ludicrous percentage increase on the slides and we do see a rather large increase of about 22 frames per second on average on low settings. And when we max everything out, we see only about an 8 frames per second on average increase with the Crimson drivers. The Radeon SI drivers were not able to play this game whatsoever. Dota 2, a pretty interesting title, got 53 frames per second on average increase on minimum settings, which is pretty darn large. And on maximum settings, we saw an increase of only about 16 frames per second, but an increase nonetheless. So Dota 2 seemed to be more than the estimated slides. So these are the actual percentages and difference that I got. So it's definitely an improvement over Catalyst 15.9, but only on Total War and Dota 2. In fact, Dota 2 had a greater improvement than what they actually wrote on their own slides. So in conclusion, it's not all gloom, it's not all lies, but again, it's also not all true either. What we saw with Bioshock Infinite and Portal 2 is that basically there was... The game is so minimal that it doesn't even really matter, it's as if it wasn't there. And whilst Total War to that did gain performance, it didn't gain as much as they stated, so that wasn't fully truthful of them. However, Dota 2 gained even more performance than they stated that it should have. So I am left wondering here, are AMD's engineering team incompetent or are the PR team completely off their rocker? Additionally, if you were to look at the Crimson Linux driver release notes, which they still haven't fixed, there is a whole lot of information that is incorrect in there. First off, they still list the HD 5000 series and 6000 series as supported, even though it is not. Additionally, they say that they only support up to kernel 3.19, which doesn't make sense. This driver supports kernel 4.2. Why? would they omit this from the release notes? Even an intern with no coding experience could do better at these release notes than what we're seeing here. But what really makes me feel like there's a disconnect between their departments is the fact that what was released in the PR slides does not appear in the release notes whatsoever. These percentage improvements that they mentioned, you don't see it in the release notes. So that's it for this benchmark video and a look at the Crimson Drivers. It's not fully gloom, but it's not fully great either. If I made mistakes, let me know down in the comments down below. I hope you got something useful from this video and I thank you for watching.